Okay, we're set. Okay. I am Cookie, and if you're like me, then I must kill you and absorb your power. Listen, don't worry. I find that most people enjoy playing alone. And today's wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Overgrown Backyard Supply Store. Because rusted out old washing machines don't just buy themselves. Sniff out our sponsor's wrong answer of the game and you'll end up with a great prize and serious cash. Okay, let's see what happens. Get ready, time to crash in. Let's begin with... Sorry for all the phallic imagery. You know, Sigmund Freud once said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And that's true, everything doesn't have to secretly, subconsciously be sexual. That said... Which common cigar size would look like the smallest penis? Presidente, Corona, Churchill, or Gigante? Compared to these other monster cigars, the Corona is only a respectable five and a half to six inches. And it has a girth of, uh... <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking about this. I call this one... Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus? A character in the game series Tekken. Kangaroo, Peanut, Albert Einstein, or Uranus? A boxing kangaroo named Roger is a recurring character in the popular fighting game franchise Tekken. There's also a boxing raptor in the game, but I'm saving that fact for our Chevy Cavalier, Madame Curie, Potato, or Boxing Raptor series of questions. Dance with me, Disco 3! And on its way, Grimace. How could you best describe the bromantic relationship going on with the Brothers Grimm? A bro-on-bro -bro bromance, a bro-on-bro-on-bro -bro bromance, a bro-on-bro-on-bro-on-bro -bro bromance, or a solo bromance? Dude, bro, get it together! Watch how easy this is. There were two Brothers Grimm, Jacob and Wilhelm. Legend has it that in his later years, Jacob Grimm fell under a terrible curse, but Wilhelm saved his life with a fist bump of true love. Here's a good one. The either-or conundrum. And A squared plus B squared equals a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven items, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a famous mathematical theorem or the title of an episode of The Big Bang Theory. If it's a mathematical theorem, press the Y button. If it's an episode of The Big Bang Theory, press the A button. We good? Here we go. The Vengeance Formulation. The Parking Spot Escalation. The Four Color Problem. The Triangle Inequality. The Egg Salad Equivalent. The Friendship Theorem. The Cold Groin Extent. Nerd Alert! I like the Big Bang Theory. Finally, there's a show that treats me like an intellectual equal. Man, I cannot get this toast out of the toaster! Stupid fork! Get that toast out of there! Open wide for... Nice to meet you, lady. 
Let's say Lady Gaga were on her way to another award ceremony, but this time sporting a kosher meat suit. If she wanted to keep it kosher, what crazy mode of transportation should she not use? A giant egg wagon? A giant wheelbarrow of flour? A giant rolling aquarium of syrup? Or a giant motorized bathtub of milk? <laughs> Mixing meat and dairy is definitely against kosher law. But everything else Lady Gaga does is totally religiously acceptable. That brings it closed to round one. And you're in pretty good shape, for now. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And remember, big cash prizes can be yours if you find the wrong answer to the game. Okay, let's do this. Next up... Ah! I had a bad stream! Which odd, super-specific movie genre might Netflix use to categorize the film Eraserhead? Quirky, dysfunctional families set in a bomb shelter. Suspenseful clown movies inspired by true stories. Gritty industrial horror films featuring mutant babies. Or violent dark comedies based on board games. Not much time... David Lynch's 1977 classic film Eraserhead is set in a nightmarish industrial town where the protagonist has a son that looks like a mutant. Netflix doesn't really have the gritty industrial horror films featuring mutant babies category yet, so I would just try looking for it under quirky romantic comedies. Question 7! Get up and change your monkey bag! Say hello to a grisly situation. I'm pretty excited and frankly a little scared that we're bringing a real live bear into the studio for this next question. Sorry, Cookie. Uh, the bear had to drop out at the last second, so you got me instead. One's made of skin, one's made of wood, so who's the dummy? Not me. We don't get the bear? No, you get me, Dirty Old Ryan, Dilly Old Ryan's sister, who looks a lot like Dilly in a wig. That is actually a set retursion who just looks... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't need to explain it again. Just ask the bear question, Betty. Okay. Which kind of bear is the most common bear in the world? The taller bears, black bears, drown bears, or Tanda Dares. Brown bears, which grizzly bears are part of, are the most common and least endangered bears in the world. I suppose you want me to leave now. Does a bear sh in the woods? Yes, yes it does. I saw a bear sh in the woods when I was a little sapling. It was horrible. This strays everywhere and it gets stuck in their fur and there's bits of swirl and salmon in their sh Oh, and the smell. It smells like... What the f*** is wrong with you? It was a rhetorical question. Get out! Follow me down to the sea. Oh, Coming up next... You never forget your first sniff. If Coco Chanel's first perfume had set a precedent for what the first of anything should be called, what would be true? January 1st would be January 3rd, Rocky would be Rocky 5, Pope Francis would be Pope Francis the 7th, or your first child would be your 19th child. <laughs> The first fragrance sold by Coco Chanel back in 1921 was Chanel No. 5. So the first Rocky movie would be called Rocky 5. This numbering system was also used by another modern classic, Mambo No. 5. It's time for... Is Our Children Learning... I was watching a little Nick Jr. yesterday during my me time, and it seems like all their show titles are just nonsense words. Lala Loopsie? Team Umizoomi? Because every word in its title is an actual word in the English language, which of these Nick Jr. shows might be the most educational? The Backyardigans? Yo Gabba Gabba? Wow Wow Wubsy? Or Bubble Guppies? 
<laughs> Want to see the answer? Bubble is a real word, obviously, and so is guppies. Nick Jr. did it. They titled an entire show using actual English. Of course, that can sometimes be misleading. I've tried to watch that Dora the Explorer before, and half the time it sounds like she's speaking a completely different language. Not to destroy your childlike view of the world here, but backyardigans aren't real things. But you know what is a real thing? These cinder blocks that you just won, courtesy of the overgrown backyard supply store. Why mow your lawn when you can just fill it up with crap? This wrong answer of the game nets you a handsome 8,000 bucks. Yeah, you're welcome. Up next, Corn Blakes. What might it sound like if Frosted Flakes mascot Tony the Tiger read the opening line of William Blake's famous poem, The Tiger? Tiger, tiger, burning bright! Tiger, tiger, proudly poised! Tiger, tiger, free and fast! Or, tiger, tiger, sugary sweet! Watch the clock! Hmm, no! I so wanted you to pick this one! The first line of William Blake's The Tiger is Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Or in Tony the Tiger speak, Burning Bright! <laughs> it's not a terribly long poem, but it takes Tony the Tiger like seven hours to read it out loud. <laughs> Brace yourself for the attack. When you see two clues that match, press your A button. 2,000 if you're right, but you lose 2,000 if you're wrong. And don't forget, remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Exit stage, right. You left what TV show before it finished? Good luck. There you have it! I've tried to leave my role as the host of You Don't Know Jack, but can never actually do it on account of a curse that Gypsy put on me. This is my prison now. No. Oh. Alright, see you next time. You Don't Know Jack!
Do you owe the IRS money and back taxes? $10,000, $20,000, $100,000? We can help. The law offices of Wilson, Hanson, Young & Associates can help you get out from under tax debt by faking your own death. It's true. For just a small fee, our lawyers will help you fake your death, easing your tax burden. Exploding motorcycle, alligator attack, saving the world from an asteroid. We promise your fake death will not only be convincing, it will be cool. No No lame lame deaths, deaths. guaranteed. Guaranteed. As an added bonus, we also provide a DVD of your funeral. See who comes, see who cries, see who suspects. And if anyone suspects, we'll We'll take take care care of them. them. Call the law offices of Wilson, Hanson, Young & Associates to help you fake your death. And remember, we don't get paid until people are fully convinced you're dead. We also specialize in DUIs and wrongful paternity suits. Ugh, don't you hate going to the movies by yourself? I mean, I do. We have so much in common. I mean, maybe you and I should sometimes... I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, whatever. I guess there aren't any good movies showing right now anyway, so never mind. Forget I said anything. That was stupid. <laughs> this message paid for by people who think you and Tina should go out on a date sometime just to see how it goes. That's so embarrassing. I did not put them up to that. Also paid for by Tina. Hey, kids, are your parents out of the room? Yeah! Good, because I want to talk to you about CandyForGold.com. At CandyForGold.com, we take all your parents' boring old gold and jewelry and send you back bags of delicious candy. But listen, we can't send you the candy unless you send us the gold. So here's what I need you to do. Wait till your mom and daddy 